I'm Holly, and today we are going to create a naturalist kit. A naturalist kit, or a nature tote, is the perfect start to any adventures in the outdoors. Having put one together in advance of a park visit is well worth the effort. Children have a natural curiosity about the world around them, and sometimes they just need a little nudge to see things they might often miss. A few supplies in a simple bag can turn a playground visit into an explorer's paradise. Our tote has changed over the years. We started with things that we had around the house and it changes with our children's personality and things that they're interested in. So I want you to start with things you already have and what you know is gonna build on your children's curiosities. Now, you could create a family tote that everyone shares and keeps things in or you could let everyone create one of their own. The great thing about a nature tote is I want you to put it where you go most, the door that you use most in your home, whether it's the front door, the side door to the garage, or you could even keep it in your car. Because the truth is, if we have to gather supplies every time we wanna to go to a park or on a hike or just going somewhere with our kids, we're less likely to do it and it never gets done. So the thing about a nature tote or a naturalist kit is you can build on it over time. You know your supplies are there and it's a great activity always on hand. Now I do have some friends here at the park with me today and they're gonna put together their own nature tote. But first, I'm gonna show you ours and the supplies that we keep inside. I wanted to show you what we have in our naturalist kit that we've had at home for years and we've added to it over the years depending on different places that we go or things that we learn that we want to put inside. We use a family one so we just have a simple tote like this uh, that can get dirty. It's kind of plastic on the inside so it doesn't matter. We just use that and we keep this one in our car actually so it's always available because you never know when you're going to have some exploring to do. The first thing I encourage you to have is a journal. Now you can have a journal for each of the children. It's fun when they're young to kind of keep a record of the things that they see and draw and as they get older, but we like to keep a family one. And it doesn't matter if it's a lined one or one that has plain paper, whatever you have on hand or that's inexpensive. We might have a few for our kids, but we love to do a family one and I tell you why. We take a record of all the places that we visited and I have one that I've kept for about six years and we love looking back through it as a family. All the places that we've visited, the birds that we've seen, interesting sites and people that we've met. And so it's a great record, not only of our schooling at home, but in life in general. So I encourage you to keep a family journal as well. And that one you might wanna keep inside the house and just remember to pick it up when you go out on your exploring together. Next, I keep simple clipboards, and I do that by, this one's just a small one, you could have a large one, and what I do is I cut eight and a half by 11 paper down in half. So I always have it full of paper. It's great for leaf rubbings, or a quick drawing, or if you wanna make a note, or something like that. These are really simple and easy to have on hand, and I always keep it full so I know that we have paper no matter what happens. Next, I love a ruler. And you might wanna have a couple, you know, you can get these pretty inexpensively. Have a couple rulers, cause it's great for learning math and measurement in nature, but also to measure bugs or sticks or anything you might come across. Making a square on the ground and searching for what you can find. Ruler is always a great thing to have on hand. But I also like to put in a measuring tape because the measuring tape is pliable and then we can do circumference with it. Measuring trees, measuring bushes, uh, all different kinds of things that aren't exactly straight and narrow, but need a little bit of pliability. So a measuring tape is a wonderful addition to your nature tote. We also keep bug boxes in ours, all different sizes, depending on what kind of bug you find. <laughs> you might find a lizard or a cricket. You might even find a beautiful butterfly. And that way you can observe them while you're visiting the park or on your nature hike, but just be sure to let them go before you leave. It's always nice to observe and 
look at their beauty, but then let them go, let them stay in the habitat that they're used to. But we have all different shapes and sizes, and it's just things we've collected over time. Tupperware things from your kitchen, anything that you can see through would be great. Or if you're collecting acorns or something like that, you might wanna keep them in a sealed container just in case there's little bugs in there that you don't want to get out. Next would be a magnifying glass. And these are so simple to find in lots of different places. They don't have to be fancy. Even the kitty ones have a magnification and that's really what you're looking for, to be able to go up to a bug or a flower and magnify it enough to see the beauty and all the intricacies that are inside. So a magnifying glass is definitely a plus. Next, we always keep colored pencils and crayons. I keep them in a Ziploc bag because they're easy just to throw in and add to. They're gonna get broken over time. So we have a set that we just keep in our tote. And that way we know that we have them. We keep crayons in there. Crayons are great for leaf rubbings that you can use your paper for. Crayons are gonna give a nice, even, beautiful texture. So even if you have older kids, even teenagers, crayons come in handy for some of those drawings and experiments that you wanna do. Next is binoculars. <laughs> And I encourage you, you don't have to invest in very expensive binoculars because when children are young, they're gonna drop them, they're gonna lose them, and you don't want to have invested a lot of money in those binoculars. Even simple kid binoculars have a magnification that they're gonna be able to see birds in the trees, uh, different things that you're wanting them to look at from a distance. Sometimes, you know, in nature, wildlife doesn't want to come near you. So you want to be able to have the magnification to see them from a distance and see all the beautiful colors and different things that they might have. So simple, cheap binoculars are good to have on hand. At some point, if you love being outdoors, you love hiking and nature walks, I do encourage you to invest in a good set of binoculars. But those are for adult hands only until children get older but you can see so much more and from a farther distance. Next, we like to keep paper bags on hand and paper bags are great for mamas who don't have anything around and your kids have all these treasures that they wanna take home. So if you keep these lunch sacks in the bag, you have an instant access to keeping things that you wanna take home or something that might be a little wet or damp and you wanna put them in a bag and not put them directly in your car. Next, we have one of my favorite things, which is our egg carton. Now, mine has colors in them, which you can do, but egg cartons are great to send your kids out on scavenger hunts. You have lots of holes to fill, lots of holes to separate the different things. So such an inexpensive yet valuable tool that you can keep in your nature tote. Now, I also have Ziploc bags because Ziploc bags are wonderful. <laughs> I actually use them if you don't have rubber gloves or just inexpensive gloves because, listen, I can touch anything if I'm wearing gloves. And so if there's something yucky or something's happened, you can use your Ziploc bag as a glove, but you can also store those icky things in the plastic bag <laughs> or different things that your kids wanna take home. So having a Ziploc bag, different sizes is wonderful just to keep in that tote as well. I also have measuring spoons, uh, different sizes and cups, because there's always water around. And sometimes we don't want our kids to get wet, and I understand that, but there's so much to learn in water. So giving them these tools where they can scoop and look at small amounts of water at a picnic table instead of leaning over and falling in to a little creek or river. So these come in handy for lots of different things. Also scooping up sand and rocks and dirt and all those different things you have the supplies right on hand in your tote bag. Last, what I wanna share with you is bird books or um, nature guides of all different kinds. We keep a few of them in our bag, but we like to look at them inside our home as well. But what's really nice is we've found these that are laminated. And so we keep a few of them on birds in our area. This one's on tracks. And that way they're not gonna get messed up. They're not gonna be destroyed by the humidity in our car. And we always have them on hand. They're a nice large print. And so all the kids can really get into it because they have lots of pictures for littles. Then they have instructions and more detail for older children. So those are really nice and handy to keep in your nature tote. 
Now I do have some friends here with me at the park today and we're gonna go and visit them and see what they have decided to put in their nature tree. Hi, I'm Julia. Hi, I'm Abby. Hi, I'm Grant. And today we are going to be making our own nature totes. 